On the Quran says God's word is complete. وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ صِدْقًا وَعَدْلًا فَبِأَيِّ حَدِيثٍ بَعْدَ اللَّهِ وَآيَاتِهِ يُؤْمِنُونَ After God's signs, verses of the Quran, and after God, which hadith, which narration, which words will you follow? The word hadith in the Quran is condemned. Anywhere it is used besides the Quran, other than the Quran, it's negative. Welcome to everyone who's joined us today, and especially to Brother Ida Yuxel. I'm Dr. Omar Zaid, and may it please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us clarity of thought as we proceed with an important discussion on the subject of Islam's misguidance. Now, this series is um, entitled Guidance, but you can't have guidance unless you understand misguidance, you see. Um, and it's the same thing with the philosophical uh, concepts of good and evil. You cannot truly understand what is good unless you have an understanding of also what is evil, what is harmful. Now, Brother Edip, I'm not going to bother introducing you, um, nor introduce myself, because, uh, well, we're just here, aren't we? And um, people can find out um, for themselves about me or about yourself, because the two of us, to the best of my knowledge thus far, we're not hiding anything. We're out front. We stand like men in the earth and uh, we speak what it is that is in our heart. We speak from the heart and both of us are seeking, like our students are, the truth. We're seeking understanding. We're seeking knowledge synthesis. Now, before you begin to inform us what it is that Allah has shared with you, I just want to make an introductory remark that has to do with my own history, which has brought me to this moment, uh, this very moment, because shortly after I became a Muslim, about two years later, I was dropped by Allah, um, mm, pretty much like uh, out of an airplane by parachute into Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and became suddenly became an alim. Now, I have no traditional education, but I signed a contract with the leading Islamic university there. And as I was reading through the clauses of the contract, I read one clause says, you are an alim. And as an alim, you have certain responsibilities. And I said, oh my God, how did I become an alim? And that's another story, and I won't go into it. But what the short of it is this. I became a research fellow at an institution that was educating PhDs in Islamic studies. And I was surrounded by sophisticated, traditionally trained alim from all over the world, not just Malays. I'm talking about Arabs and people from Africa and other parts of the world, Persia and uh, United States, people who had been in, trained at the highest universities all over the world. And uh, here I am, a new convert. I'm a retired medical doctor, but I had to remake myself 
when I was there in Southeast Asia. And uh, I did so. I wrote a book, and that's why I wound up in that parachute. The director of research for this institution read my book on the Trinity and offered me a job. At the time, I was teaching English to put rice in my bowl in Bangkok. And uh, so there I am with all these alim. And lo and behold, as I'm continuing my uh, studies of Islamic history, um, I discovered this story of uh, what happened early on in Islam. And I was amazed that this actually happened, that the, the companion known as Hadrat Ali was murdered and that his this was a result of a civil what a civil war, a dis, the misunderstanding, but a blatant act of disobedience on the part of people who were sworn to obey him, you see. Now, the most momentous incident that uh, occurred was he's facing this army led by Murwia, and um, his soldiers refused the direct command to attack Muria. All historians, historians agree that Muria would have lost that battle had his soldiers attacked. Now, the point I came to when I uh, studied this history is this. They refused to attack because of a superstition. Someone in Muria's camp and I suspected a Jew, advised him to hang copies of what was then the Quran on the tips of their spears. And when Ali's troops saw this, they refused to attack. And I said, well, my gosh, that's a stupid thing to do. But it was a very intelligent thing on the part of Muria's counselor, you see. And um, then I found out all in good time after Ali's murder, that this fellow, uh, Moria, established this, um, what's it called, the um, uh, dynasty, Umayyad dynasty, and uh, they began slaughtering the people who actually knew what was going on and the obedient uh, companions of the prophet, um, including his family. And the capital was suddenly moved from Medina. And um, I, I considered all these things. And then I, it occurred to me that 40 years within the death of the prophet, you see, 40 years now, the Quadrashi triumphed. The enemies of Inla Islam triumphed. And when I came to this realization, now listen, I don't know any word of Arabic, you understand? And I'm sitting at conference tables with all these alim, and we're making decisions on what to do and how to guide our students. And when I said, well, you know, I, I would question these alim and I would say, well, what is this all about? And they would just say, well, this was just a natural course of history. And uh, then go on as if this was normal, you'll see. And I was perplexed by this, absolutely perplexed. And no one would discuss the fact that the enemies of Islam had taken over within one generation of the Prophet's death. And they will praise both parties, Zayed. Yes. Amen. They will praise so, both Ali and uh, Muawiyah. <laughs> <laughs> this is remarkable to me, uh, brother. And as I continued in my relationship with these people, I found more and more evidence of similar hypocrisy and similarly, similar academic denial. Uh, and uh, then when I came to uh, the actual study of the Hadith, I'm one of the few students that um, 
actually read the entire book of Bukhari. You see, and uh, I read the translation, and it's part of one of the first things I do when I come across a new piece of knowledge, whether it's religious or anything other. I want to know who the authors are, and I want to know their history. And of course, if it's a man, I want to know as much as I possibly can about his wife. And if they're living, I want to see the smile on her face, you see, because that tells me something, it tells me something that runs very deep into the constitution of our relationship with each other and with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I saw all of these things missing in Islam. And no one would discuss it with me. And after I finished the book of Hadith, I found so many contradictions and so many things that were ridiculous, uh, and as well as other things that were seemed to hold merit. And I'm wondering to myself, why is it that Muslims abandoned Al Quran? and re-establish themselves on an entirely new basis. The basis being the Hadith. Now, let me say one more thing before I give you the floor, brother. My study of history shows that, well, this has precedent. It's not just something that happened to Islam. It happened to Buddha. It happened to Zarathustra. It happened to the what we call the Christian religion, it happened to the Jews with their Halakha and their Mishnah. It's the same pattern. The traditions of the men who are written down, the traditions, so-called traditions of the prophets or the messengers who brought the message of these great religions were so-called written down. In the case of Buddha, 500 years later, in the case of uh, Muhammad, two to three hundred years later, and in the case of the Jews, we've got a thousand year long history by the time uh, Muhammad uh, was walking the earth. So um, I saw this pattern and Brother Edith, no one wanted to talk to me about it. No one wanted to explore this fact of life, this fact of history. And no one wanted to discuss the, comp the contradictions in the Hadith. Now, as far as I did get in any discussion with these alim, was this. There was a, they admitted to a Hadith war, okay? But they wouldn't even discuss that in any detail. So I'm still exploring this area of knowledge, of neglected knowledge, and uh, it recently came to my attention that there was a revisionist movement amongst the Muslim and including Muslim alim like yourself, you see. So I'm very excited to have this conversation with you, very excited. And I'm very keen to learn what I can because it seems that my suspicions from the very beginning, now I'm going back 17 years ago or so since my conversion, my suspicions are substantiated by revisionists and not by the traditionalist alim who avoid discussing these things as if it was some sort of uh, um, Pacific Islander taboo, you see. So, um, dear brother Edip, can you tell us what you know of the early history of the development of this false approach to the religion that our beloved prophet did in fact establish and why it is that Muslims abandoned his path. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, today's date is uh, May 14, 2022. I start my talks uh, would say in the date <laughs> it's important sometimes let me get a few books from behind uh, these are my books and just a um, few books uh, from
from the old times to show you uh, just about my background. Uh, this was uh, one of my first books, in fact, maybe the second or third books uh, uh, in 1984, mm -hmm. 85. It was a best selling book. And here is, I don't know whether visible to you, the picture of me. I am the one black beard with next to mm -hmm. Ahmed Didat. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I, I always enjoyed Mr. Didat. Yeah. And um, that time I was a Sunni uh, author and also I was leader of uh, uh, Islamist youth. Uh, and there was about one million uh, followers, uh, members. And Tayyip Erdogan, today's Turkish dictator, was also uh, in the organization. Uh, I don't know even how to put this one properly. Let me see. <laughs> I never uh -huh. like those Got little ear plugs. Okay. Um, and then uh, this is another book, While I Was Sunni, Interesting Questions, some theological, philosophical, and maybe a little bit semi-political questions. I'm answering those questions. For example, who created God? I showed the linguistic problem. It's not a philosophical question. It is a problem. For example, uh, why Muhammad married with too many women? Uh, are there genes, invisible creatures? Are women half of men? And uh, Adam's kid, did they marry each other? A similar question about the destiny, predestination, mm. about Christianity, matter and energy, which one is first? A series of questions, interesting yes. questions. And um, later, um, this is uh, the year uh, after my debate with Dr. Rashad Khalifa when I was in Turkey. I was 29 years old. Uh, this is interesting question number two. Um, this is where I learned the religion that uh, I put my life at risk for. My father was top clergyman in Turkey. He was Fati, means alim, in four mezahibs. And uh, if you, you uh, Google my name, you will see my father's name too, and there are a lot of pages about him. And he, he was very popular in Turkey. All religious factions and orders, uh, they would respect him. Perhaps he was called the last uh, unifying religious uh, uh, scholar. Anyway, but uh, also I end up in prison before this book, uh, four year in prison for promoting Sharia in Turkey. I wanted to uh, lead a revolution like Iran. One year after revolution, I was secretly invited by Iranian government to Iran, Tehran, to talk about how to uh, they help us to promote revolution in Turkey. I met top clergymen, Pastoran, the leader of Pastoran, Ebu Sherif, and uh, today's Khamenei, the leader. Uh, he just I. Behind him, I prayed the, the Juma prayer in Tehran universities. But anyway, and uh, I met ministers and stuff to bring the revolution. I was so integrated. I had connection with Ikhwani Muslimin of Egypt, Syria, and uh, Iraq's Hizb tahrir and uh, also Jamaat Islam in uh, Pakistan, Mehdudis, uh, the same kind of uh, followers. And of, of course, uh, I was a very fan of Ali Shirati. Still, I love Ali Shirati. He's different than others. And uh, But when I was doing my military service in a very late age, age 29, as a dangerous foot soldier, uh, at that time, there were some events happened that very incredible events. First, I was very under microscope. I was threatened by the top uh, uh, colonel, and uh, but uh, my life changed in half because of a few invention I did that time from the top center of the headquarters of Turkish military. They sent letter to them. They said, uh, let, let him do his research on his invention. Uh, anyway, it is a sidetrack. And at that time, I had time to communicate with Dr. Rashad Khalifa. First time I, dis I discovered him. 
initially my communication with uh, Ahmed Didat. I met him in a uh, conference, uh, World WAMI, World Assembly of Muslim Youth Conference in 1980. It was mm-hmm. organized by Turkish uh, Ministry of Youth and uh, also by Arabitat uh, al-Alim al-Islami in Saudi Arabia. This was in combination. It was a beautiful resort camp uh, near, nearby the sea. And two weeks we were in that camp. Uh, Yusuf al-Qaradawi was there. I don't know whether you heard about al-Qaradawi. Yusuf al-Qaradawi. The, from uh, Egypt, I think, Libya. Mm-hmm. He's a very famous uh, Salafi scholar. And also Ahmed Didat and few others. I liked very much Ahmed Didat, and I continued my communication with him after uh, translating his work and also doing my own extra research on it. But later I decided to communicate with the real discoverer of the Miracle 19. Mm -hmm. And uh, it it was destined to be that time while I was doing my military service at age 29. And then I I was expecting him to be like my father. I liked Mm -hmm. his work. I know that it was incredible. And then I sent him letter with some hadith in it too. At that time, not internet. I'm talking about 1986. Mm-hmm. Come on, 1986. And then I received letter from him. I noticed that he doesn't really care about hadith. And I was a little bit surprised, but I don't know. And then I sent him back. This was new to you, was it? Yeah, it was of course new. And then I sent back and uh, when I received the next one, I found that he's not believing in Hadith. And mm. what he was doing, he was very kind of practical guy. He would shrink my, reduce the size of my mail, put on a uh, copying machine, reduce the size and create bigger margin on the side. And then with marker, just with arrows, answer with the verses of the Quran or saying few mm-hmm. notes on the margin. Beautiful. My letter there and I see his responses. What happened in our conversation, uh, communication debate through m- mail, I found that I am sending hadith, he's sending verses of the Quran, each verses of the Quran with just as if I discover new in that context, highlighted yes, some word. Oh my gosh. Mm. And like I was sending snakes, <laughs> his, uh, he was like us, uh, Moses' uh, staff, Yes. Swallowing the snakes, unbelievable. <laughs> and each time, <laughs> honestly, I would again is God's word. I would send the Ibn Felan Abu Felan's hadith. It mm. is that modus operandi. Imagine you say God says this, the Quran. They say, but Ibn Felan Abu Felan Hazrat and said this <laughs> exactly <laughs> yes. like staff mm-hmm. and the snakes. Yes, and then yes. I notice I am losing and stuff, and then. He said, have you read my book, Quran, Hadith, and Islam? I said, no. Uh, it is here. Where is it? Oh, gosh. It is the, huh, here. It is the ugliest cover of a book in the world. I think it will win first place <laughs> in the competition. The ugliest cover. Here it is. <laughs> but yeah. this is one of the most remarkable book it is not uh-huh. it is just verses of the quran mm-hmm. and highlighted certain places with stars and underline unbelievable this mm-hmm. book just i read it in one hour mm-hmm. and the easiest re- to read and the most remarkable that my gosh I found that I was not understanding those verses. How Uh in the world, as if I was mesmerized by Mm -hmm. my upbringing, the religion of my parents. That night, it was 1st of July, 1986. Mm -hmm. It is my Laylatul Qadr. Muhammad's Laylatul Qadr was the night we don't know when the Quran revealed to him. But for each person could be a night of the power destiny. The yes. night that you receive the Quran, it changes mm-hmm. your paradigm. That was my night. That night, uh-huh. I repented to God. I said, God, forgive me for equating, for associating partners to go to you and to your words 
from Ibn Falan and Abu Falan fabrications attributed to Muhammad. Because the Quran was saying Mubin, I was not really believing the Quran was Mubin. I was saying, nope, not Mubin. I don't know how to wash my buttock in the Quran. I don't know which foot I enter the restroom with the Quran. I mm-hmm. cannot clean myself with the Quran. I cannot even food with the, eat food because mm-hmm. which hand to eat, how to mm-hmm. eat, how many bites, and how yes. many fingers, which food first, correct? Whether mm-hmm. drinking water, standing or sitting, even the restroom, whether should I sit or stand, whether should I turn to Qibla or my back to Qibla, correct? In mm-hmm. Hadith, book, there are hundreds of Hadiths how to clean your buttock and they they say to me they say how can we pray without the quran goodness sake it is your least problem you cannot even wash your buttock clean yourself without hadith. <laughs> you cannot even eat food your, without hadith yes. mm-hmm. <laughs> because there are more hadiths about uh, toilet than about adalet than about freedom about justice about tawhid it's incredible anyway uh that time the Quran says, Mufassal, Fussilat min ladun alim in khabir, it is detailed by God who knows everything. And uh, well, no, Quran is not Mufassal. When it says the Quran, Watamat kilima to Rabbika Sitkan wa'adla, your Lord's words are complete in justice and uh, truthfulness. Yes. And say, no, it's not complete. Here you forgot. We need to fill it out. For example, just recently at, in a debate I came across and they were getting angry, blasphemy, and this is insult to Muhammad. We need to beat him. We need to put that mm-hmm. person in prison I, because they are insulting our high values. Mm-hmm. And I responded I t- on Twitter. I said, it appears to be as a Muslim, the Quran is not among your high values. Because mm-hmm. chapter 4, verse 140 says, uh, when you are in a money group, when you are discussing the issues, debating with them, if they insult, make mockery of your religion, leave their presence. Correct? Yes. Say yes. peace and leave their presence. Mm-hmm. And later, when they give up, from making mockery because if they are in the mood of ridiculing you, making mockery of you, they are mm-hmm. not in the mood of reasoning, debate, yes. and yes. leave them, but not leave them forever. Don't uh, consider them as a kind of hostile enemy. They are ignorant and go back again, continue your debate with them. Beautiful. The most uh, tolerant to ideas. Imagine they are making mockery of God and your religion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. God doesn't say kill them, stab them, bite them, correct? Bite them. Yes. Yes. <laughs> or uh, uh, insult them, be angry with them. No. God yeah. is the creator of the universe. If God tolerating this and feeding them and giving them air and stuff, who are you in the name of the creator Yes. Be, uh, go uh, kind of try to hurt that person mm-hmm. and, uh, when I put this verse there what happened you know they brought the translation and commentary of uh, Turkish religious affairs this is the institution that incredible hundred more than hundred thousand imams are fed from people's taxi they, mm-hmm. they make living out of this and yes. then they brought the commentary. The commentary says they add ver- words into the verse as if it's not complete. God forgot. They say, if you don't have power to beat them, to punish them, then you leave their presence. Oh, but oh, I see. They actually that. make these additions. Yes, of course. They add this one into the verse because mm-hmm. from the hadith. And, um, yeah, you know, the most uh, one uh, one in one of my debates with the follower of Hadith, I said, goodness sake, if the, of course, among the Hadith, there are some nice Hadith, good Hadith. Yes. In, in any book, any book you say these are bad books, you will find very good statements. In Chinese proverbs, you will find more beautiful words 
than in hadith books. <laughs> in mm-hmm. any book, in Karl Marx's yes. uh, manifesto for communism, find you will find many beautiful statements that perhaps yes. much better, much insightful than all hadith books combined. Mm. But Satan, what does introduce you poison mixed with uh, sugar, with candies? Exactly, yes. this is yes. it. Mm. And when you get this as an authority, not just a book you read like Chinese Proverbs or Tolstoy's book or Immanuel Kant's uh, philosophy or any other book, when Mm -hmm. you consider as wholly equal to God's word, that time you are absolutely becoming one of the worst. Because God says, Who is worse than the one who attributes lies to God? Mm. And this is the worst position. Mm. And uh, I said, bring me a hadith that you think is the best that I have to follow besides the Quran. Mm -hmm. This was in public debate. He brought me this hadith. Mm -hmm. If you see something bad, evil, change it with your hand. If you cannot change it with your words, try to change it with your words, object it with words. If you cannot do that, Object it with your heart. Mm-hmm. It seems very reasonable, beautiful hadith. Uh, and objecting with hearts in this context is the weakest of um, all the faith. Do you understand? Are you following English yes. and my yes. fifth language? No, no, no. It's, it's fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you understand? If you don't understand anything, please uh, ask no, me. No, no. I understand completely. I think my. You are uh, I think our listeners are, w- are with you as well. You know. Okay. And then uh, I said, okay, but this is interesting. This is a very dangerous hadith. Mm -hmm. If you are not critical, if you are not careful enough, this hadith could cause many problems in the society. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you see something wrong, you think it is wrong, you go Mm -hmm. just interfere, involve, you go impose on the people even by force, what yes. you think is right. Mm-hmm. This is wrong. This is the Quran doesn't want us. In fact, the first thing is doing the order of the things. You're mentally, you object it. And later you go discuss with them, debate, in case you are wrong, in case there is something you are making false assumption. Mm-hmm. And then if something really urgently need, if it is your business to stop it, it may not be your business. That person may be doing harm to himself, drinking mm-hmm. alcohol or gambling, mm-hmm. correct? Or whatever mm-hmm. he's doing, stinking, for example, but not too close to you. Let him stink. He decided to stink. Who are you, correct? Mm-hmm. Or maybe <laughs> eating, let's say, pork or, you, or yeah. eating a food that you don't like. You think it is bad. It is his decision. He's not forcing anyone to do that, correct? And therefore, it is his business. You should not be able to interfere. But if he is doing something you think that it could be bad for the society, then okay, you may have the right to maybe, according to the procedure procedure laws, interfere there. And this could be very bad. When you see the Islamic so-called... If, 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 let me interrupt here. If, if, yeah. you, if you want to do that uh, it's, and to protect the community, you actually have to be in a position of authority. You have to have a certain license to do that, in, of in course, my view. There yeah. could be an exigent circumstance. Let's say someone mm-hmm. is beating his wife in the public, correct? Yes. And that time you may go stop it. And uh, yes. because calling uh, procedures that time will take too long, the harm will be done by then. Therefore, yes, but, yes. Uh, well, I was in Iran. Here it is what I lived. People follow these hadiths. What happened to me? I, I, I lived the problem with these hadiths. And I in see. fact, in the Muslim, so-called Muslim world, everyone is a police officer. Everyone is also a moral police. You yes. know. The backward countries, people or government cannot distinguish morality with legality, illegality, with crime. Mm-hmm. Could be immoral, but not criminal. A person yes. can do something immoral, but doesn't harm the third party, doesn't hurt 
the third parties, other parties, you have no right really to interfere. It is that yes. personal choice. You may dislike it, hate it, no problem. It is his choice. But if he is hurting another party, that time as a society, member of the society, or as a society, a government, you may interfere properly according to the proportion of the harm is done. Yes. Uh, I was in Iran in 1980 at age 23 representing the Turkish uh, youth, uh, Muslim Islamist youth uh, uh, organization called Akincilar that time, means uh, the one who is uh, who are frontiers. Um, they, I, ha I had host. The host had a very top connection from top. I think uh, the intelligence, uh, uh, secret intelligence of Iran, they were hosting me. Mm -hmm. In retrospect, I understand that. Yeah, and the one that I asked Savak. him, I said, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. No, not Savak, after Savak. Savak was uh, Shah's. Ah, Shah, okay. Yeah, Thank in you. fact, uh, the headquarter of Savak was taken over by Pastaran, the uh, military police in Iran. Ah, okay, yeah. And I met uh, the Abu Sharif, the first president of that there. Anyway, mm -hmm. one day I asked them, my handlers, let's call, and I asked mm -hmm. them, I said, yeah, I want to walk uh, in Tehran on my own one day instead of being mm -hmm. with you. I want to explore on my own freely. And mm -hmm. I knew some Persian. Persian was... Uh, the fourth language, English is the fifth language I learned chronologically. Mm -hmm. Persian was the fourth one. In the last two years of high school, I learned Persian. I love Persian. Anyway, I was able to communicate. And uh, that day, I was uh, not uh, fasting. I decided not to fast. It was hot summer mm -hmm. uh, in 1980, Ramadan. I decided not to fast. And I forgot, in fact, about fasting. I shopped some uh, drink, uh, something to drink. While mm -hmm. walking, I was drinking. Uh, mm -hmm. It was water. And then on the street, busy uh, street in Tehran, I heard uh, certain voices behind me. I didn't pay attention. And later I see the voice is raised. And then I look back. I found that a merchant in front of the door of his uh, shop is yelling at me, rusé mm -hmm. and stuff, and angry. Mm -hmm. And then... The, I, I was wondering what's going on. Initially, I, I didn't understand what, and I understand. And then I see another one joined him, and both of them got baton in their hands, some sticks, and they start chasing me, running after me. They oh, want gosh. to beat me. Oh, and dear. then I ran. I ran. Mm -hmm. Finally, I was able to save myself from being beaten in Tehran, in the city of Te in the streets of Tehran. Goodness, Goodness sake. me. Mm -hmm. I was there to import the revolution it for a moment it kind of like light came to my mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. the quran says they walk and it is like lightning it opens up they see yes. it but suddenly darkness come and mm -hmm. suddenly darkness came i continued my ignorance but at that moment for a moment i thought my gosh i'm here to import revolution i am hosted by the top leaders of the revolution in fact they wanted to take me to Khomeini, that time he was in Qum. Mm -hmm. I said, no, I have uh, serious meetings, businesses in Tehran. I don't want to go to ceremonial meeting with Khomeini. I like Khomeini very much. I was in love mm -hmm. with him. But I was that serious. And here it is, I am chased like a stray dog by these mm -hmm. merchants because they are going to save their religion. They follow the Hadith. If you see mm -hmm. something wrong, change it with your hands and with your sticks. Yes. They didn't ask me. If they asked me, for example, even with the paradigm, with the system, mm -hmm. within their own religion, still mm -hmm. they wouldn't have the right to beat me, even to say anything, because I was traveler and it was hot, or it could be I could be sick. According to their own religion also, I had mm -hmm. permission not to fast. Yes. But, of course, according to my system, who cares? If you don't fast, you don't yes. fast. It's not my yes. business to impose my fasting on you. If someone yes. eats while I'm fasting, I should not be angry with that. Well, what yes. is it? I'm angry. Who am I? Yes. I, I am trying to kind of control myself, not controlling other people. Not, not only that. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Not only that, but they, they assumed that you were a Muslim. 
Yeah, they assumed. Oh, that's good. They assumed I am Muslim. They assumed I, 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 I am not a traveler. I am not sick. Anything that I must mm -hmm. fast like they do, and they the first thing they didn't even want discuss first ask me. No, they wanted yeah. to beat me. And so your thing, point, your point is that this hadith alone, this one simple hadith, gives Muslims license to to cause harm. Exactly. It seems kind of very good hadith, but in fact, one of the worst hadith in the Muslim <clears throat> world creates a personality, feels right, audacity to interfere to everyone around them with their mm -hmm. own ignorance. They are the most ignorant people, backward people, unfortunately, and they feel ob obligation and right as if they will get sawab, they will go to heaven because they go beat another person force another person to do what they think it is right. And mm -hmm. the Taliban was doing this. What Taliban do with women, with anyone, they feel, for example, if I walk with this one, according to their religion, it is makruh, and they will beat me. They will try to take shirt away, give me a longer shirt. Mm -hmm. And this is really trouble, one of the biggest trouble. Uh, okay, I want to finish up uh, this one. The hadith. You know, if you are a Sunni, you see the problem with the Catholic religion pretty well. You see the problem with Hindu religion pretty well. You are very careful, smart, analyzing. You see, this is crazy. This is idol worship. Oh, they follow the teaching of St. Paul, yes. who is not even the disciple of Jesus, who made yes. up it. And Trinity came 325 years after Jesus. In Nicene yes. Conference, ridiculous. Ha ha ha. They are yes. worshiping this. This is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But they are not be able to look at themselves, even 10%. One, uh, how do you say 10%? Yeah, about 10% <laughs> of their intelligence that they are using against Christianity or against Hinduism, mm -hmm. just 10% of it, if they use to look at themselves, their own religion with that critical mind they have to leave it immediately but they are not the same with catholics catholics they look at us for example let me give you example mm -hmm. are you patient with me am i talking too of much? course i'm very patient with you i'm enjoying this i hope i hope our listeners are as well yes go ahead for example we see the problem with uh, let's say trinity we say trinity was made up 325 years even in the bible old and new testament you don't find the word trinity but it is now the flag of christianity trinity trinity everywhere correct mm -hmm. very yes. strange if it right. is something so important if it is the foundation of faith and the, fund, the only mean of salvation, goodness sake, whole Old Testament and New Testament, thick book. If you hit someone with the Old New Testament, that person will pass out, correct? Thick mm -hmm. book, huge. You don't see a single word of Trinity. And where do you get up with it? Well, chronologically, we know 325 years after Jesus. It's very obvious. And you mm -hmm. drink, get a sip of wine, you say, this is the blood of my Savior. Hmm. Mm -hmm. How strange it is. <laughs> you drink the blood of your savior, pretentious mm -hmm. cannibalism or meat, cookie. Yeah, that is that's what it is. It favorite. is cannibalism. Huh. Mm -hmm. And you, look at the travesty, the twist, the murder weapon, which is cross. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you worship the murder weapon. If your yes. beloved ones is killed by a gun, are you going to worship the gun? No, but the religion is made through conflicting, convoluted, a certain uh, outlandish, unbelievable, incredible stories that you have to put your brain on the side and just on faith believe on those things. They do. Now, mm -hmm. Sunni or Shiite, uh, the followers of Sunni and Shiite, they see this problem. They are critical. For example, Ahmed Didat or Zaki Naik. Oh, they are very great. Oh, mashallah, you say, wow, you are very smart. You can see this problem that all these Christian scholars, professors, they cannot see. Mashallah. But Christians see their problem and they don't see what Christians see. Look at this. 
They are preaching us about idol worship, about shirk. They go to Mecca, they kiss a black stone with so much respect. They even stampede over each other, kill each other to be able to kiss that black stone. Yes. Not only that, there is another black, there is a stone uh, building there in cube shape. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Funny, they put clothes around it. It is called, they dress it with silk, black silk. Mm-hmm. And over this, many kilograms, I don't know how many kilograms of golden uh, calligraphy written around it. And mm-hmm. then this building, which was built once to meet inside, the, the first people who built that building, they didn't worship, kiss the wall or rotate around it. They entered the building mm-hmm. and they use it to cover uh, them from uh, sun's uh, x-rays and from dust mm-hmm. storms and stuff from mm-hmm. uh, climate. And But what they did... They turn it to a biblo. Do you know what does biblo mean? Me, biblo means a like a sculpture, a holy sculpture, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. and dress it with silk and gold and rotating around this stone building, yes. and then get little stone in their hand, stoning the erected stones over there, and then pretending that it is Satan. This is crazy. This is yes. idol worship. Yes, There's no yes. meaning in there. Black yeah. stone, holy black stone, holy building stone, rotating around the building stone, taking stones in their hand, stoning the stones they erected. In fact, these uh, uh, erected stones, what is called obelix? Yeah, obelix. Yeah. Obelix. Obelisk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I, I saw a picture of it in 1920s, I believe. It was a small stone, one single stone mm-hmm. with like a midget. And then you time you see it become like big, 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 <laughs> tall, tall, tall. Yeah. And then it gives birth to a tree. Right now, Satan grow <laughs> from being short midget, grow to tall two Satan, three Satans yes. and multiply it, having bigger. And <laughs> this is crazy. But they yes. cannot the, yes, the, these uh, this stone worship uh, dates back thousands and thousands of years. You you can find the origins in ancient uh, what became uh, it, Pakistan in, in ancient the ancient uh, Indus Valley. Um, yeah, the stones I, I were they, they were gods and goddesses, and the people yeah. would circle them. I, I want to fi- uh, finalize yeah. this ch- chapter. Uh, this yes. question, I know mm-hmm. I, I am full of uh, th- this hadith. Uh, is a conspiracy against the Quran, my brother. When the Quran says the Quran is enough for you, sufficient. In fact, chapter 5 uh, warns Prophet Muhammad against the whims of those people who do not find Quran sufficient. Mm-hmm. It says, follow the Quran. We reveal you the Quran. Follow the Quran. According to the Quran, do mm-hmm. the judgment among them. Follow the Quran. They want to divert you from the Quran. They want Quran and ghayri haza. They want a Quran beyond this, uh, different than this. Do not follow their whims. If Muhammad make up some words against us, we'll punish him. Therefore, it is a very clear, the Quran alone, and the only complaint in the Quran that Prophet Muhammad, messenger in the Day of Judgment, will make, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا Oh, my Lord, my people have deserted the Quran. It is not Quran plus Sunnah. Now, mm-hmm. saying Quran plus Sunnah, anyone who tells you I follow Quran and Sunnah, that person with that very statement claims that he has no respect to Quran. He doesn't believe the Quran. Again, so I follow the Quran and Sunnah. You don't follow the Quran. You don't even follow Prophet Muhammad because Prophet Muhammad believed in the Quran did mm-hmm. not reject the Quran like you do. Because according to Quran, Sunnet is not something different. It's not something, certain other laws besides the Quran that it is in Hadith books. Sunnetullah, Sunnetullah in the Quran, never Sunnet Muhammad. It's always Sunnetullah means God's law. It is God's mm-hmm. law which is valid in among nations throughout history. It is yes. sociological mm-hmm. laws. When a community go against God's law in nature and God's law in, uh, let's say, 
law, uh, regarding uh, human interaction or regarding interaction of humans with planet Earth, if you go against that, contradict that, you get punishment. Yes. You go against God's law, you consume a lot, you pollute the air, and then it comes back to you as a climate change, correct? Yes, yes. <laughs> you go against God's law, you build a lousy house on a fault line, you don't care about it, you don't respect, you don't study, and you also steal from the cement, and you, you hire mm -hmm. some ignorant uh, engineers, some crews yes. to design it, you build a stupid house, and then in a, short, a little earthquake, it collapses on you, well, you are punished by God's law. You become promiscuous in sexual life, and then you are punished with sexually transmitted diseases. These are God's law. Mm -hmm. This is Sunnatul law. And yes. or if God sends a messenger, prophet sends them with proof, with evidence that they are messengers. This is also Sunnatul law. Therefore, if someone says Quran and Sunnat, Sunnat Muhammad, that person by this very statement rejecting the Quranic verses that Sunnatullah, Sunnatullah, Sunnatullah. وَلَنْ تَجْدَ لِسُنَّةِ اللَّهِ تَحْوِيلًا وَلَنْ تَجْدَ لِسُنَّةِ اللَّهِ تَبْدِيلًا You will not find in God's law any change. And many others. Therefore, what they did, what they did. The Quran says, follow God and his messenger. But the Quran, other verses, because the Quran is like an or organism. All the verses yes. related to each other. They are interacting. Yes. Yes. They are explaining each other. Mm -hmm. Other verse about messenger says, I am a log logician. I teach logic and philosophy. I yes. put premises in order and I reach a conclusion. Mm -hmm. the, the verses about messenger you put in an order, absolutely you cannot get hadith book external to the Quran. Absolutely impossible. But if you ignore some... Uh, do you believe in some of the book and reject some of them? What they do, exactly they do. They take the verses out of the context or they ignore some other verses that explain in that verse. And then, in fact, worse than that, they bring fabrications, hadith, and other things to distort the verse. They end up with anything they want. Do you have the books that you are studying it? And you 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 find in them anything you want. This is about today's Sunni and Shias. Do you have a book that you study and you find anything you want with them? What they said, obey God and messenger means obey God means obeying the Quran. Obeying messenger means obeying Bukhari 230 years after Muhammad. Or Ibn Hanbal or Abu Dawid or Tirmizi. This is a Sunni version. Or there are about six idols besides the Quran, and there are more in their sectarian jurisprudence. And also Shiites, they have their own version. And they bifurcate, they separate God from the messenger. But the Quran says, They separate God from the messenger. They say, God is the Quran, and Rasul, not the Quran. Rasul means the messenger who delivered the Quran. No, it is, means Ibn Falan Abu Falan. By this way, they created volumes of book and they distorted the Quran. This mm -hmm. is one. But the Quran says, وَمَا عَلَى الرَّسُولِ إِلَّا الْبَلَاغِ The job of the postman, messenger, is only delivering the message. It is with double negation, it absolutely limit the job of the messenger. But of course, Muhammad, there was one role of him, he was a messenger. Also, he was a father. The father, Muhammad, died. He was a husband. A husband, Muhammad, died. Come on. This was not supposed to... Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I need to stop this. Okay. The job, uh, Muhammad was a husband. Husband, Muhammad, died. Muhammad was also, besides being messenger, he was an elected leader of... Medina city state, mm -hmm. which is which was a secular, federal, social, democratic state. Absolutely, these are the things that I know. Uh, they are modern terminology, but the reality, the practice over there was exactly like this. It was secular, yes. 
because the Jews and Christians and the pagans and mm -hmm. other they, Zoroastrians they in Medina. They yes, it was a federation. There's no doubt yeah. about that. And they didn't accept Muhammad as a messenger of God. They accepted mm -hmm. him as a just ruler who yes. elected, who had a covenant mm -hmm. with him, a contract, social contract, which is Medina constitution. There is reference in the Quran to that relationship. And therefore, it was, and it was federal because multiple jur jurisdiction. It was a pluralist, uh, multiple with multiple jurisdictions, and um, and also uh, it was very tolerant uh, to their whatever. Everyone could have their mm. own belief system, uh, anyway. And um, but that Muhammad is also dead. Muhammad yes. is not alive to listen to our uh, discussions, debates. Yes or uh, disagreements on an issue, uh, either individual issues or communal issues. Therefore, Muhammad, the head of state, is dead. Muhammad. Absolutely. Yeah. But Muhammad, mm -hmm. as messenger of God, the mission is represented in, as in the Quran, is completed. Therefore, following messenger is following the Quran. That, mm -hmm. But by separating God from messenger, they did the worst thing. And second... The chapter 9, it starts, Baraatun min Allahi wa rasulihi ila ladhina ahatun min al-mushriki. God says this is an ultimatum from God and his messengers to those who associate partners with God who had a uh, contract with you, had certain social contract with you. And mm -hmm. they, they, they violated that contract, that, this, uh, that uh, agreement with you. And this is says min Allahi wa Rasuli from God and His Messenger. Then, if we look at it, at this verse, according to the mindset of Sunni and Shiites, then we have to separate God from Messenger. We say God is the Quran, Messenger is Hadith, and therefore this chapter is Hadith plus God's word. There is Muhammad's word in this chapter too, because it says Raya mm -hmm. Allah, this ultimatum, chapter ultimatum, is from God and his messenger. They say, mm -hmm. well, if there is God and messenger, it means God is different and messenger has different laws and rules and addition to that. Well, mm -hmm. let's use it. Then Baraya, chapter Baraya, that means God set down, may God forgive me for this statement, set down together with Muhammad. They consulted each other together. They wrote it down. But mm -hmm. they don't accept it here. Aha. Uh -huh. That means this expression, God and messenger, it doesn't mean two different sorts of authority. It means yes. only this. The source of authority in al hukmu illa lillah, only mm -hmm. God, which many verses says, and the messenger, because delivering that one, it is not revealed to us directly the Quran. It was revealed to Muhammad directly for the purpose of having test. And because we receive this message through Muhammad as a messenger, that obeying the messenger is like obeying the God. Therefore, the Quran clearly says it's not obeying mm -hmm. Muhammad. Muhammad has no interference, right to interfere by adding one word or changing one word. Or taking away one word. In fact, the Quran warns Muhammad not to even make commentary, make kind of speculation on the verses of the Quran. But to harik bihi lisaneke, do not move your tongues with it. Detajela bi, in order to rush to understand it. The mm -hmm. following verse says it is up to us to gather together to edit it and to explain it. And the Quran mm -hmm. is self-explanatory book. The Quran says, We made the Quran easy to understand, to be understood, to mm -hmm. be warned. Isn't there anyone who take a lesson, who take uh, who receive a message? No. They said, No, the Quran is difficult. Wow. How in the world you say that? Because according to the Quran, the Quran is difficult to, um, to be understood by idol worshippers, by ingrates. Mm -hmm. You are yes. basically acknowledging that you are an ingrate, you are an idol worshiper, because the Quran really easy to be understood. But the moment you say the Quran is difficult to be understood, that time you handicap yourself from understanding the Quran. 
because you deprive yourself from intellectual motivation to study to understand you i have tests in my philosophy classes i yes. do this test when you handicap yourself you say it is difficult a question mm -hmm. the simplest question my students cannot solve it i pass mm -hmm. them through a series of steps and then they think the next question will be more difficult than previous one the second mm -hmm. question becomes difficult the third question is difficult but still it is solvable i solve for mm -hmm. them they mm -hmm. cannot solve it but it is solvable and the fourth question is trust me is like elementary school question yeah and the first grader can easily answer when it comes yes. to the fourth question the college students bright college students they cannot solve that simple question why yes. because they think the fourth question will be even more difficult than the third question mm. that very expectation that this is difficult to understand they miss the simplest answer solution for that question this power of suggestion is a form of hypnotism and, uh, and it is done yeah. mm -hmm. muslim people are handicapped intellectually handicapped by yes. religious clergymen by telling them you cannot understand the quran you need mm -hmm. this garbage piles of would, would you agree with me uh Edip, that uh, the, these clergymen have become a kind of a priesthood are they intermediaries yeah they, they do in fact they are not only a passive intermediaries, there are manipulators and distorters. And uh, if you look at the beginning of my translation of the Quran, Quran a reformist translation, uh, have you seen it? Yes, I have a copy of it. Okay, I have it here because of this, I cannot reach it. I handicap yeah. myself because of this. <laughs> I yeah. cannot. <laughs> yeah. okay. I think you have your earplugs reversed. Uh, that's okay <laughs> because i recently start i used to do without earplug and people yeah. advise me no, it's, it's better, it's better if you use uh, I, did, I in the past i had something like this it was easier this is not i am familiar with it and i, I didn't spend time even to learn about it, it is shame <laughs> on me i will blame myself yes, for shame this. on you okay yes well, and, listen <laughs> uh Ed, if I, I i want to stop you here because we have um uh time for some q a and there are listeners who are asking questions and so um uh before we enter the q a i just want to uh kind of uh, sum up a little bit of what you what I, th I think you're trying to say here um the the hadith as they've come to us are a form of um deception on one hand but they're also a form of interference on another. Now, deception and interference are different. I mean, if you're playing football, you run interference so that uh, someone can get ahead with the, with the ball and reach the goal. Um, but it seems to me that uh, this interference has caused a great deception and has prevented uh, Islam, uh, the Muslim Ummah, uh, from reaching the goal, and this goal is relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the reason I'm saying that is because this series of interviews, webinars I'm doing, is concerns the, the essence of guidance, true guidance. And so what you're suggesting, and there's more than sufficient evidence uh, to substantiate this, is that the hadith, um, not all, but the bulk of the hadith are um, a form of uh, misguidance and deception, or at least um, uh, some form of um, illusion, okay, that prevents people from the real relationship, all right? Now, when I'm talking about a real relationship, I'm talking about uh, uh, distant than uh, Muslims currently uh, think he is. I mean, before I became a Muslim, I used to talk to God as if he was sitting on my shoulder. And uh, then I read in the Quran, hey, I'm closer to you than your jugular vein. I said, hey, I was right. Okay, he's right there. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and then I uh, encountered the, uh, I encountered the Ummah after my conversion. I was very excited, like all new convert. 
And I found the Islam that I read about in the Quran is not the Islam that was practiced. And I also found that Muslims were distant, had distanced themselves from this uh, pure relationship with Allah and uh, true guidance. Not that I didn't make my, uh, uh, my fair share of mistakes and sins and all that sort of thing, but I was still on this, this what they call this path, this wayfaring that uh, would return me to Allah, and I'm still on that path, and I'm hoping that these webinars will help people to complete their own journey and come to this intimate relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it seems to me that the hadith are an impediment. They're not a help um, to this goal. They're preventing uh, people from reaching the goal. And um, so I would very much like us to continue uh, this discussion because I think uh, we can engage our students in a meaningful manner, which is going to help them find relevance in Islam. And that's what the students, the younger generation are looking for. They're looking for this relevance. Why do I practice this religion? Why do I pray? Why do I follow uh, the dictates that are in the Quran? Uh, why do I want to submit myself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And how do I do that? You see. Now, there's a, a series of questions that have come up before here. that i want to yeah. say two quick things one is i yes, want to brother. commend you for your courage and honesty to question christian religion which you were raised in with and then question the sunni religion later you accepted these are two major uh one of them i did i know how it is difficult Mm. to question the inherited religion, religion of your family and your environment. And you have done twice. Therefore, I have great respect to you, my dear brother. You are a beautiful person. May God guide you and guide me too. And oh, that um, is a uh, beautiful thing. Much. And uh, second, uh, you put a link to Amazon.com. Yes, uh, yes, some of yes. Mm -hmm. my books are at Amazon, the English ones, but... I don't make money from my books on religion. This is my principal mm. uh, thing. Therefore, I have them PDF for free uh, on internet at academia.edu. I have a page. page. You will mm. see all my English books or most of them that I could able to format and put it there. They are there. Please feel free to take it and share it for free. And uh, I wanted to make this one because for some people... Uh, there, yes, some people want to have the book in their hand, but if it mm. is not, don't buy the book. It's don't waste not the always resources possible. and stuff. One, one, one question that people uh, keeps on popping up on my screen here for Q and A is this, brother. The has to do with the Hajj and uh, the rituals surrounding the Hajj. What, what, what can you tell us about that? I mean, how much of what is considered to be the Hajj is in fact? on true guidance the quran is uh, clearly explains hajj is very simple but hajj is turned to a bunch of rituals which has nothing to do with the purpose of hajj therefore you see millions of people going there uh, unfortunately ignorant with good people with good intention they come back with ignorance as, as far as the production so much money spent, so much time and energy, nothing. The biggest conference event in the world, as far as the impact on world, uh, in any way, there is no impact. Neg uh, in fact, it is negative impact. It is uh, in terms of production of pollution, uh, the aeroplanes going there and over mm -hmm. there, killing each other, stampeding and stuff. But... Uh, Hajj means uh, comes from the, uh, uh, the word Hajjaja, Hajja, Hajja Ibrahim. Mm -hmm. For example, yes, they please tell us. Please tell Abraham. Us. It mm -hmm. means debate, Hajj. Hujjat comes from the word Hajjaja, from these three letters. Mm -hmm. Hujjat means evidence used in debate. Hujjat, like Hujjatullah, yes. God's mm -hmm. Hujjat, God's proof, evidence. Therefore, mm -hmm. Hajj comes, uh, the examples of Hajj is given in the Quran, Ibrahim's Hajj with his own people when he uh, pedagogically teaches them through Socratic dialogue that uh, those uh, 
things like the star, the, the sun cannot be God, and these idols cannot be because when he uh, destroys some uh, small idols, uh, statues, mm -hmm. correct? Statues or statutes? Statues. St Sorry. Statues, not statues. with double not, T. Not statutes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. Somehow yes. I studied law. I have a law degree. <laughs> yes. Somehow I got confused about these two words. Still, I confused. <laughs> yes. Statues. Okay. English is confusing. And, yes. Yeah. During Abraham time, his people had statues. But in fact, in the Quran, during Muhammad time, they didn't have statues. They made up. Absolutely. There is no mentioning that Quraysh people had statues, sculptures. No, they had abstract uh, idol worship like true Shafa, uh, Lat, Manat, Al Uzza, Tilke Esma, Unsemay, Tumuha, and Tumwa Baukum. These are the attributes you and your forefathers made up. But during Ibrahim time, his people using symbols as mediators between them and God, and he mm -hmm. wanted to criticize. He was not showing them power like, uh, you know, Taliban destroyed the things. It was not. He was a young kid and he was oppressed by them. He wanted to show them, teach them something. For that reason, he broke the small, few small idols. Otherwise, he could break the bigger idols. But some ignorant people, they think it means you have the job to go destroy people's idols. No, it was not. He was oppressed. And therefore, he needed to teach them something. And uh, as a kind of like a little bit, Ibrahim has the youth in him, you know, like prankster. He wanted to do them, to teach them. And then he made an argument, beautiful argument. They said, uh, who brought this? Uh, Ibrahim, you broke these uh, statues. No, he said, the bigger idols. Beautiful irony and putting yes, them... Yes. In the mode yes. of thinking. Therefore, Abraham is an example of the one who did the first Hajj. Hajj, we do this Hajj. All prophets and messengers did this Hajj on the streets, in the bazaars, like Moses in the palace. But mm -hmm. there is also great Hajj ordered by God to all people in biggest conference. Come together, debate the important issues, global issues, mm -hmm. or issues involving their nations, involving humanity to discuss or war and peace, or progress, or climate change, or uh, children issues, or hunger issues, and come discuss in, in, in groups. That is it, Al-Hajj. Therefore, um, Al-Bayt in the Quran also means the headquarter, means center. It's mm -hmm. mentioned in the Quran 19 times. When we say the headquarter of something, yes, it is a building. But in fact, besides building, it has an abstract authority. Even that building is destroyed, maybe another building, that will be the headquarter. They confuse yes. that one with that. means it is the center, it is the capital city right now. Invite people to come here to discuss the central issues, mm -hmm. debate, uh, the main issues that it is relevant to all humanity. First of all, Hajj is for all Nas, not for all only Mu'mins to invite them. Hajj means debate. And there are few terminology in the Quran, it is mistranslated, like Arafa, uh, uh, Arafat, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, Arafat uh, means recognition that means when people come to that conference from around the world as an audience or as a speaker and it is in four months in uh, because the hajj conference should be done spread in four months these are the four months according to the quran according to our language or it must start from zil hajjah and then muharram correct and then safar and then rabi wal awwal the name of the months themselves uh, proves that these are the four consecutive months. Uh, in mm -hmm. my translation of the Quran, I had a beautiful proof for that argument. I don't mm -hmm. want, but later we can discuss. Yes. Now, in those months, people will come and they will, when they come there, there should be an identification. Arafah mm -hmm. means identification. Honey, mm -hmm. uh, in fact, in hereafter, when people are resurrected, they go to Araf, fil Arafi. Mm -hmm are off where identified people when they are bifurcated <laughs> yes, do, yes. 
you are mm-hmm. anyway the same day so it's a kind of a passport yeah passport or identification mm-hmm. when you go to conferences right now we do you go there yes you have mm-hmm. you you write down your name and you get a card your name mm-hmm. on it where you came from who you are it is a matter of identification down yes. there and uh, there is a, another word uh, these are uh, from god's uh, uh, symbols shair what is it it is uh and they think it is two hills it is not the name the word themselves tell us a software means purification introspective uh, questioning <laughs> med, 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 meditation and al marwa the arabic word muruwa the same word means chivalry go helping other be volunteer helping people maybe carrying water for them if there is someone mm-hmm. that sick help mm-hmm. that person be a volunteer god says you can oscillate between a software the a person in your own let's say uh, place while you are mm-hmm. visiting there or you can go volunteer you can oscillate between two there is no harm there you mm-hmm. don't need to be always a volunteer you don't need to be always kind of praying and studying sure. something mm-hmm. and that's it and the but they created so many rituals so many incredible uh, well I let me how, how did the hajj become what it is today i mean this is this is something that perplexes me if uh, this is actually the meaning i mean i understand that and when you talk about circles you the very traditional societies all over the world especially for example amongst the the Sioux Indians they called the circle of elders this the circle they say and then after they were destroyed by the the war they said the circle is broken the elders that guided the community that and kept their cultures and traditions is broken you see and there's something uh, also to do with this in amongst the A- african tribes so this circle idea uh is is refers to the elders so coming together is is traditionally in my my mindset is this is where the council of elders the circle of elders would come together and meet and the uh, community would stand on the periphery around them and listen in ranks usually to to the conversation that the elders would have um and you had to be invited into this circle you couldn't just qualify for it because you ran for office you know you you had to be invited you had to prove your worth uh, in order to be at this this is what we consider i would think in traditional islam should be the shura you see and uh, this would then pass on and make decisions that would uh, concern not just the religion but also the governance of the uh, uh, community and for their welfare so how did all of this become a meaningless ritual it it is done uh, very easily uh, it slowly it goes and people tend to start these kind of things and then continues and continues with time in all christianity you see so many rituals do you mm-hmm. think jesus time uh, people disciples of jesus drank his blood and cookies and worship yes. the mm-hmm. things or so many rituals they do or uh, it is with time slowly gradually especially when it is uh, promoted by the clergymen and the governments it is done for example i give you one example how distortion is done slowly gradually slowly, and immediately. gradually yeah. mm-hmm. like la ilaha illallah is the in the quran is mentioned about 30 times is 29 or 30 please check it la ilaha illahu la ilaha illallah 29 or 30 times and I feel bad that I don't know exactly how many times, which I did once, but mm-hmm. I mess it up now. And uh, the word uh, they mentioned, none of them, Muhammad's name or Isa or Musa or Dawood, none of them is added to this name, uh, to this mm-hmm. la ilaha illallah. Yeah. And in mm-hmm. fact, chapter uh, 39, verse 45, uh, chapter Zumer, uh, verse 45 says, God alone when it's mentioned. Wahdahu alone when it's mentioned. Waiza Zukira Allahu Wahdahu Ishma'azat Kulubu Lazina Layuminuna Bil Akhira. 
those who do not believe trust in hereafter they do not like it their heart gets sh shrinks mm -hmm. when others than god like jesus muhammad ali mentioned uh, they get happy and mm -hmm. the throughout the quran and the quran says shahada the correct shahada according to god according to angels according to those who are endowed with knowledge is la ilaha illahu shahid allahu annahu la ilaha illahu wal malaikatu wa ulu al ilm qaiman bil qist chapter 3 verse mm -hmm. 18 in fact chapter 72 chapter jinn the invisible in that mm -hmm. chapter chapter uh, uh, 72 verse 18 says wa anna al masajid lillahi fala tad'u ma allahi ahadan Masajid, the place of uh, submission to God, prostration, belongs to God alone. Do not call anyone besides God. But mm -hmm. today's Masajid, you see God and Muhammad, Abu Bakr, uh, Omar, Usman, mm -hmm. Ali, Usman, correct, and mm -hmm. Hassan, mm -hmm. Hussein, and some others, you see God's next to God's name. In Shahada, they add, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, they add Muhammad Rasulullah next to it. As if God's oneness cannot be stand alone without Muhammad. No. I see. God's yeah. oneness, it is ontological, philosophical, logical fact that doesn't need Muhammad. But mm. they add Muhammad's name, despite those verses of the Quran. 30 mm -hmm. verses of the Quran, not a single place Muhammad's name is not mentioned. Like uh, chapter 39, verse 45, like chapter 33, verse 18, 72, uh, 18. In fact, there is one place, Shahada to Muhammad's messenger is mentioned. God knew in the future that hypocrites, they will do this. Therefore, God exposes them even that time. Says, uh, This is in the chapter, Quran? Yeah, chapter 63. I see. Chapter 63, okay. verse 1 says, I witness that Muhammad is messenger of God. I witness that you are messenger of God. God says, hypocrites. God knows that Muhammad is messenger of God, but hypocrites are lying. Those hypocrites of that time, they didn't believe Muhammad is messenger. Today's hypocrites do not believe too because they believe Muhammad is next to God, is really mm -hmm. divine. Mm -hmm. Without mm -hmm. Muhammad, they cannot, his intercession they believe. They believe that Muhammad can make haram, halal besides God. Even Muhammad can abrogate God's verses. Absolutely, they don't believe that Muhammad is mm. messenger. They believe Muhammad is a messenger God next to God because they give him in al hukm illa lillah. Nope, hukm is Muhammad. Well, they've God given cannot... him the power of intervention. Is that not, not yes? Correct? Absolutely. Especially intercession is not trusting that God is just, that God has mercy. God, God is for basically rejecting many attributes of God. A Rahman, mm -hmm. they don't believe God is Rahim. They don't believe God is Ghafir. They don't God is Muqsit and La Yuzli Munafsan. And they don't know, maybe God doesn't know them. Muhammad knows them better. The dead Muhammad uh -huh. knows them personally, but God doesn't know them. Muhammad. Tell God, this guy, this Sunni, is a really a good guy. Please forgive uh -huh. him. The, the Muhammad, Catholics have done the same thing with... Uh, excuse yeah. me. The Catholics have done the same thing with uh, yeah. the mother of Isa. They made her an intermediary. Exactly. Yeah. Either mm -hmm. Muhammad must be more uh, knowledgeable about you than God, or yeah. Muhammad more merciful than God, or forgiver than goodness sake. This is idol worship according to the Quran. This is rejected. This mm -hmm. shafa'a is exactly what Meccan idol worshippers they were believing. And this is exactly many verses of the Quran reject mm -hmm. this kind of thing. And uh, the hajj, uh, the one especially, the longest hadith in Bukhari is about Mi'raj. Of course, yes. Muhammad experienced an uh, extraordinary event when God communicated with him the Quran, of course. But... The story of Miraj is a big lie. It is one of the most silly lies ever. It's unbelievable. Okay, can, can we discuss that uh, on, a, yeah, on, on another right. meeting? Because okay. I want to return to the concept of the Hajj before we close up here. Because um, um, 
this is very significant, and many people here have been asking this question about the Hajj. Now, my my from my own personal perspective, uh, you know, someone offered uh, to uh, make the Hajj for me because I couldn't go at the time, and uh, my books were banned in Saudi Arabia, so I thought it best not to go. Um, and uh, so they went, they made the Hajj, and I thought, oh, but this is very nice, thank you very much. And I said, you know, more than anything else, I'm not concerned about Mecca, I'm concerned about the Prophet, and, uh, you know, if you manage to get to Medina, please stop by his grave and say, Dr. Omar said hello, and thank you. Um, that sort of thing. I, I'm not a religious man. I mean, I, I don't get, get into this pious stuff. If I make a prayer, I make a simple door, and that's it. Uh, if God's sitting on my shoulder, I, I really don't have to pray because he already knows what's in my heart. It's, you know, the prayer is on for the part, for the part of me. It's a benefit for me, okay, so that I know and confirm what it is that I really want by word and then by action, you see, so you can per perform the good deeds because uh, faith without good deeds is useless. It's dead. But people are asking then, Brother uh, Edip, um well, what's the benefit then of making a Hajj? I mean, uh, should we do it? And uh, my immediate response is, well, I think it's a waste of effort. I think it's a waste of time. Um, maybe Allah would honor your intention, okay? Uh, because Allah does honor our intention according to what I understand. But um, I wouldn't, I, I'd be more concerned about getting, um, you know, food to the needy rather than making harsh and feeding the Saudis. Uh, so um, what do you think, brother, about that? Is it I worth think it? absolutely going there, uh, joining that uh, acts of uh, idol worship and stuff is absolutely uh, nothing to do with the Hajj, uh, that uh, big conference that was done during Prophet Muhammad and or uh, previously. But right now, though it is not the biggest big Hajj, Hajj al-Akbar, but we are doing Hajj, for example, inshallah, uh, this coming August, 19 and 21 August in between, uh -huh. we have a Hajj in Oxford University. And uh, we are the real Hajj. Hajj. Yeah, <laughs> this is a Hajj. This is beautiful, exactly according to the I Quran. Yes. Humans will come there. We will discuss these issues involving humanity and uh, involving Muslim uh, or Sunni Shiite population, which is in dire need to get out of this uh, uh, incredible uh, uh, religion, which is unfortunately mm -hmm. destroying our potential, destroying uh, our uh, children. And uh, therefore, I invite you to my brother, Omar Zaid, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I have uh, not announced it very publicly. We have a mm -hmm. poster for it. I'm going to announce it on Twitter and LinkedIn. Yes, and, please. Uh, please keep us uh, informed, and, and I will also repeat the invitation to uh, on my forum and uh, yes, my if blog. you can uh, well, join us as mm -hmm. a panelist, uh, there is a certain deadline for paper abstract oh. of the paper. Please uh, join. No, us. I wouldn't be able to do that anymore. I'm crippled uh, with MS, and so I don't okay. travel. I don't travel anymore, and okay, my traveling okay. days are over. Thank you very much. Uh, Brother Edith, we're going to close here in a minute. Okay. And, and let me ask you a question, uh, because I don't want to beleaguer our audience with too much time. I don't like long prayers and long interviews like this. It, uh, people have things to do and lives to live. Sure. Um, would you be interested in uh, doing another webinar with us? That would be fine. I talk too much, but that time we dedicate all short question and answers. Question okay. and answers. That All right, then we'll do, we'll do a Q&A with you next time, maybe okay. in two or three weeks, uh, yeah. perhaps after your, your hog here. Send me that information so I can repost it. And um, I want to thank you very much uh, for joining us and uh, for sharing uh, with us what you have learned by experience and also by research, you see. And we're very interested in this because... Uh, I call myself an essential monotheist, um, and um, I, I think that's a pretty good term. Yes. Um, and um, we're to 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 make that concrete, you have to have knowledge synthesis, I believe. Uh, so you have to take the truth from wherever it is that you can find it, dear, dear brother. So um, 
I think we're on the same page as far as uh, eclecticism is concerned. And um, I'm very happy and honored to have you with us. And I would like to invite you back, dear brother, to, to join it again, join us again and share with us. We'll do a Q&A, inshallah. And uh, for now, I would just like to say to you and for everyone else, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum salam wa Thank you. You're welcome. Until next time.